Under State Governor Oluwaru Tsumia Kiridolu is set to begin his medical leave on Wednesday, December the 13th, 2023, for necessary follow-up medical treatment. Throughout his medical absence, Governor Akiridolu will prioritize his health, ensuring a complete recovery before resuming official duties. A formal letter detailing the medical leave and officially transferring executive powers in accordance with the Nigerian constitution will be submitted to the House of Assembly. During Governor Akiridolu's absence, Deputy Governor Honorable Loki Orumison Ayedasua will assume the governor's responsibilities in an acting capacity. Governor Akiridolu expresses gratitude for the steadfast support and affection of the people of Undo State, assuring them of his administration's continued commitment to progress and prosperity. Well, now joining us for insights on the political developments in Undo State following Governor Akiridolu's health situation and the way forward is the former presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, Omoyele Shawere. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Well, I'd like you to uh, give us your reaction on what's been happening so far in Undo State. You know, now the governor is again going on medical leave. This time around, he will transfer powers to his deputy. But in the meantime, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Kayode Adjulo, is alleging that some people are already forging the governor's signature to engage in fraudulent activities. What are your thoughts on what's been happening in the past couple of weeks? First is that... Uh the governor of Undo State never returned from his first medical leave, uh, even though letters were transmitted to the state that he had returned back about uh, four months ago. He never stepped foot on Undo State. That is to say, uh, it, is, it is reasonable to say that he has abdicated his role as the governor of the state a long time ago. And governors is not a joke. He just can't wake up one day and say that, well, I don't want to go to work. I'm a ghost worker and I'm on leave, and you never went back to office, and then you go back on a, on a leave. You know, this is just a really, really horrible story that we're hearing from our beloved state. And uh, where it becomes then very difficult is that I heard you now saying that he's going to transmit another letter to Ondo State so that his deputy can act in his capacity as a, as a governor. The question you should ask is, where are they going to get the signature to write a letter to to the Ondo State House of Assembly. And as I speak with you, just a few seconds before I got into the studio, I was told that the Ondo State House of Assembly has been meeting all day long, waiting for his son to provide the letter that uh, was supposed to transmit uh, to, the, to, the, to the House of Assembly, allowing his governor to, uh, I mean, the, the deputy to, to, to start uh, as an acting governor, and they can't even find his son. So this is how terrible governance has become in this country, and in particular in our state, that the, the destiny of an entire state of over 5 million people, and I'm talking about a state that's bigger than several West African countries uh, in population, some countries around the world, <laughs> left in the hands of a family to be tossing them around uh, the way it is. And I'm very ashamed, and I should say this, that I'm ashamed that uh, those young people, or I don't know if they are old, in the Industry House of Assembly, who are waiting for his son to bring if another forged letter to them saying that he's going on leave when he has not resumed from the first uh, medical leave. So this is uh, something that is unacceptable. This is something that is ridiculous. And uh, I don't know why anybody would accept this, especially considering that we've been through this before at the highest levels of government. Don't let, don't, don't let us forget that there was a president in this country, Mario Yaradra, who was brain dead for five months. Five months. And he was running this country by proxy until the people rose up and said, enough is enough. And today, we are repeating the same thing in Ondo State. And interestingly, Akere Dolu was the chairman of, uh, or the president of uh, the Nigerian Bar Association at that time. He said clearly that what Yaradra was doing was uh, not only illegal, but immoral, and asked him to, to resign at that time. And now he's stunned. He wants to go to his grave with Ondo State uh, governorship, which is impossible. So I, I don't know why anybody will accept this. And Ondo State, for that matter, you know, this is the same Ondo State that people always brag about that they don't accept nonsense. Now nonsense has become the governor of uh, Ondo State. And this is completely unacceptable. And my position is not determined by the fact that I'm from the state. I would do the same for any 
state in the country or the country itself, because we've done this before for Nigeria and resolved the issue of, uh, uh, at that time, with the uh, doctrine of necessity. And eventually, the acting, uh, the vice president became the acting president and eventually the president uh, of the country. So I just want to make that very clear that this is unacceptable and uh, it should not be acceptable to anybody. And I'm pointing my fingers at those people in uh, the State House of Assembly that they're a disgrace, a disgrace to the states and Nigeria and lawmaking. Now, Mr. Shawere, like you rightly pointed out, you know, what's happening is not, is, is not new. We've had that, you know, with the late President um, Yaradua. We also saw something similar, you know, happen in Taraba State with the late Governor Dambaba Suntai. So how do we prevent this kind of scenarios going forward? Do we need more laws or is it implementation of the existing laws, you know, that we need to do more? I mean, I mean... The there are laws already, yes, there are laws already that are meant to address this after Yaradua died. But, it, you know, this is always what I say about Nigeria, you know. You can make laws, and in a country that is lawless, laws would never work until you have people who believe in the rule of law. And sometimes the rule of law do not happen except people rise up and enforce the rule of law. That's what happened in the case of Yaradua. We had to rise up all over this country, men and women. And don't forget during Yaradua's time, while we were rising up, there were people who were benefiting from it. There were pastors, imams in this country, who went and saw Yaradu and said that he's, he's doing very well. There were newspapers, media houses, who were saying that, oh, they saw Yaradu climbing hills and he was running on treadmills. There was a newspaper that carried a ridiculous story Mr. at that Shawara, time. That now, we understand that you'll be having a resume or resign meeting in Akure on Saturday. Can you tell us more about it? We understand there's some sort of controversy over the use of a hall and that you'll be suing the DG of Akure. What more can you tell us? Well, let me uh, first and foremost say I accept your apologies. Never interrupt a presidential candidate just to take a governor uh, in a press uh, conference. Uh, we are all equal before... Uh, before, before the constitution of, uh, whatever the constitution of this country is. So, but regarding uh, Ondo, we are going on Saturday to have a, uh, a town hall meeting to discuss the situation of the state. The situation of the state is not just about the governor alone, uh, it is about the abandonment of uh, governors in the state. I must tell you that for the last 13 years, the southern part of Ondo state has not had a flicker of electricity, 13 years. And that's uh, something that's important to us. They are increasing school fees in the state, just across the country. And uh, we now have in our hands a situation in which the Ondo state uh, governor has uh, abandoned his duties. So we want to concretely address that. We are not satisfied, and I mean this, that uh, you have, they have to run to Abuja to come and take a decision on behalf of the people of Ondo State. The president of Nigeria is not the governor of Ondo State. He cannot tell the people of Ondo State what to do. And that's what I was saying before I got uh, interrupted, that even for those in the House of Assembly who are not doing their duties as they should, we would encourage the people of Ondo State to start recalling them. They don't know what they are elected to do. And maybe it's because they were not elected anyway. Most of them were selected in these uh, kangaroo elections that has bedeviled Nigeria over the years. So we will go ahead and have that meeting. Uh, we learned that the SSS uh, went to the palace of the DG of Akure to uh, force him to cancel the hall. And they wrote a very, very, uh, uh, a very, very demeaning letter yesterday to me saying that I, I deceived them uh, with the use of the hall. I've never deceived anybody. I paid with my own, from my own personal account a day before uh, a deposit of 100000 So nobody can claim that they don't know my name in Nigeria. And I called them. I spoke with the guy who signed the press release, one Michael, that I want to speak with the KBAC himself to see if he can attend uh, the, our, our town hall meeting. And uh, they wrote to me that they have canceled it because of the DSS. But we are going ahead. Uh, we are going ahead in the same location, the hall, and have a town hall meeting on that day. And uh, we have now expanded this to include every town and city in Ondo State. The only thing that can avert that town hall meeting and protest on that day is if they do what is right. And it's very simple. Just hand over power to uh, the deputy. I don't know the deputy. I don't want to know who the deputy is. Just like I didn't know Jonathan when I was fighting against uh, the Yaradua Kabal, and I don't know him till today. I've never, actually never met 
Jonathan before in person. But we all fought for him. And we expect that what is right will be done in Ondo State and by the people of Ondo State and for the people of Ondo State. We deserve to have governors. You cannot go and add our governor to that of uh, or your state and tell us that it's all right. And uh, now we can't even find members of the family before gene signature, uh, engaging in criminal activities. And this must be addressed urgently. So that is our position uh, regarding uh, Saturday, which is December 16th. We will meet in uh, Akure, and uh, there's going to be a lot of meetings of other, in other places across the state. In fact, we've been informed that some people are willing to uh, hold a protest in Abuja in front of uh, the Ondo State uh, Liaison Office. So this will spread very quickly. So, uh, and I know that uh, we, know, we know them, but we are not new to this. Uh, this used to happen to us under military rule as well, where uh, we will book halls and the DSS will invade the place or they will force their owners to close down the hall. But we'll still go ahead and uh, do what we have to do. It's, uh, it's more than necessary now and it's too late and we can't be intimidated anyways. They know those who are involved. Well, finally, before I let you go, and I'd like you to answer in less than a minute. You know, whenever issues like this happen, we always witness the mysterious cabal, you know, that we've been hearing about, but that has never been identified, you know, at play. So I'm wondering what we can do to reform our political system so as to weaken the hold of this cabals and strengthen democracy. Very briefly, please. I, I think it's, it's, an African, it's an African disease. Uh, it's not only in Nigeria, there are cabals everywhere. But there's something wrong with these African leaders that they have no consideration for their constituents when they find themselves in situations like this. In other places, people resign over the embezzlement of 5,000 Naira. You know, there was a guy in Chicago, governor of uh, Illinois, who went to jail not because he did anything wrong yet, but because he was discussing on the phone that he wants to sell you know, uh, former President Obama's senatorial position to some people. Just the negotiation sent him to jail. So we are here, we have a governor who is not at work, he's incapacitated, and his children, I mean his son, well his children, his wife are forging signatures. And today the DSS invited the person who raised an alarm, the whistleblower to a meeting, and they said it's a person of oh, interest. Shawari, well, we are I'm supposed to be talking about our best already. And, um, yes. I have to interrupt you because we've come to the end of the show, and we really do not have any proof that his wife and children are forging signatures, so we'll have to be very careful with our statement. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday.